In this interview, we discuss vaping in the Philippines, its increasing use and popularity among adult smokers. How will controversial regulations impact public health and the lives of millions of smokers? We speak with Clarice Virgino from the Vapors Philippines to see what the future holds for vaping. What made you get involved in this space? What intrigued you that you said, okay, I'm going to get involved in consumer advocacy for tobacco harm mm -hmm. reduction? I started smoking when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't really chain smoking, but uh, it was an occasional thing. And as cliche as it sounds, uh, it, I think it's peer pressure, which persuaded me to take on the habit. And it went on and on. And then I met some people in the university who were vaping. When I was smoking, I was smoking menthol cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And these people, uh, the vapors in the school, uh, they were vaping custard and fruit flavored mm -hmm. uh, liquids. So I wasn't really into that. But I was very curious on how they get the nicotine from that. And then eventually I decided to quit smoking. And uh, if I could get that from something which is safer or you know less harmful or less risky, I would definitely go with that. So from there, uh, I started to have a strong stance on choosing something which is way better than cigarettes the combustible cigarettes and uh, with that I also encourage not only my friends but also some of my family members who are also smoking to do the switch mm -hmm. rather than you know smoking regular cigarettes which is definitely very very harmful to one's health so yeah there being that smoking is frowned upon in the Philippines by women, and I'm presuming then that vaping would also be frowned upon. How does that affect you being able to be an advocate for tobacco harm reduction? I mean, do you use your law student status or do you use your vapor status or do you use both? I use both. Uh, I, I, I noticed that if I use both, it gives me a certain level of credibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's looking for it. The whole day. I think being a woman actually gives me an advantage give you the right because choice, uh, not, not all females would right. fight for something like this. Okay. And uh, I think I can use that to my advantage by really showing them that, you know, vaping is not harmful. Okay, it's, it's, it's part of tobacco harm reduction and everyone should actually recognize that. Okay, I, uh, one of the things I've noticed in the Philippines too is that Harm reduced products have an age restriction of 21, and tobacco has an age restriction of 18. Uh -huh. How does yeah. that work? I don't understand that. Actually, um, the regular combustible cigarettes, uh, yeah, they say that it, one should be 18 and above, but uh, the reality is kids as young as five or six years old could get access to cigarettes kind of a bit ironic that when it comes to THR products, one has to be 21. And the age of majority in the Philippines, according to the law, is 18 and it's not 21. So there's a little gray area there why there's a difference when it comes to age. This makes no sense. Um, uh -huh. In saying that, okay, um, if somebody who had never smoked had come up to you and said, well, why are you doing what you do? Why are you so passionate about tobacco harm reduction? Why should it matter to me? How would you answer them? Um, I think um, even if you're not a smoker or a vapor, I think the issue here concerns everyone because the advocacy and the fight for the right of vapors is it's inclusive. And at the end of the day, we're talking about consumer rights. And this is basically under the umbrella of human rights. So it includes everyone. It's, it's not specific that it's not specific to only a group. How do, do people in the Philippines or how does the government approach, for example, drug harm reduction or alcohol harm? Is there something in place uh -huh. for that that could translate into tobacco? Um, when it comes to drug harm reduction, uh, 
um, I don't know if this is known across the world, but uh, the president has that we do not know. a really um, blurred policy when it comes to drug harm reduction. Uh, right now, we have what we call Oplan Tokhang, and uh, in a way, it's implied that if you're into drugs, uh, you could get killed easily. Oh, you could get uh, a shoot to kill order, something like that. And there have been a lot of uh, victims who fell to this Oplan Tokhang. Okay. And a lot of uh, human rights groups in the Philippines also oppose this because, you know, even if you are, let's say, uh, a drug user or a drug pusher, uh, you still have your rights. So this really involves. Uh, human rights policies. Uh, to relate that to tobacco harm reduction, uh, right now, there's little to zero recognition when it comes to the concept of tobacco harm reduction. We do not support their claim of reduced harm. So vaping is also dangerous and I am banning it. And if you're smoking now, you will be arrested. I'm sure the government officials have toyed with the idea and considered it because uh, tobacco harm reduction as a term appears in some policies, in some uh, laws that we have right now. But uh, I don't think government officials uh, are seeing what THR really is, like the bigger picture. It is very clear that it is harmful as shown now in the U.S., what is happening in the U.S. It's sad because it's like they're missing the point of what THR is and what it entails. We are depriving the 17 million Filipino smokers of this opportunity. Next question for you. Um, as you know, um, the WHO, Framework Convention of Tobacco Control, the FCTC, um, is the Philippines a signatory to that? Yes. Okay. And does the Philippines, do the Philippines actually follow the guidelines word for word and take it as expert and not look into it themselves? So if the WHO says you must ban this or you must regulate this strictly, then that automatically becomes law, for, for example, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the WHO FCTC has a really strong hold and influence over the policy making and regulatory decisions in the country and in a way i think it's treated as gospel truth i'm not going to say that uh all of our officials are just you know blind followers uh -huh. but definitely it has strong influence on them and um it's hard to persuade them from from a consumer uh, consumer's point of view. It's hard to persuade them because, of course, uh, they think the WHO FCTC is, uh, like I said, it's gospel truth. So they heavily consider what it says compared to what the consumers say, on the other hand. If someone wanted to get involved in THR advocacy in the Philippines, what would you say to them? I would really encourage that person to get involved because I believe that awareness is where it starts. You know, uh, and um, correct information dissemination, this is very, very important when it comes to THR because there are a lot of uh, so-called studies and articles saying that THR is nonsense and that it's not important so, but actually it is and we are in we're living in modern times so i think we have to accept the fact that uh times are changing and uh, we have a lot of modernization happening and that includes thr so i think i i think whether you're a smoker or you're a vapor or just a simple citizen it would be a big help if you help in raising awareness among people um, any final thoughts you'd like to share with everybody? Just to wrap it up, uh, I think it's important for everyone to consider what vapors or people who are opting for THR products are dealing with. Deaths 
cancers, whatever it is. It's got nothing to do with e-cigarettes. We're it's just these touching the surface. The Not so everyone understands the concept of CHR and uh, what cannabis. vapors are dealing with. And like I said, uh, awareness could really go a long way, coupled with correct information dissemination. And uh, I think it's high time for us to use uh, all these modernizations and innovations around us to our advantage to come up with reasonable and humane decisions as well as policies.